Hello, hello, everyone. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. Here's Justina. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for taking time to come chat. Hi from Texas. Hi from Wisconsin. Oh, my God, this is so fun. I'm in Florida. That's cool. Yay. I love it. Yeah. Put, put, put where you're from. It's so great to see everybody. Yeah, it's so fun. This is so cool. I've never I done one of these before. Yeah, it's so fun. So fun to connect. And it's, it's wild because it's the interweb. So we're so far away, but we're so close. And um, I just want to really welcome everybody because I know uh, spending, you know, it's a noisy world out there. And to carve out any time to be here with us today is such a gift. And we really hope to give that gift back to you. Um, I'm here with Justina Blakeney, who I admire so much. She is such a creative force in the world, and I want to um, hit her up with some questions. I hope you'll get a lot out of it. Um, I have a feeling if you're tuning in today, uh, Justina and myself, and you could have a lot in common, and that is that we love to move through life at the beat of our own drum, even if that's not super easy sometimes. I feel like we are all dreamers. We um, could be creative. Um, we are likely all optimists, which is very interesting. And we have this really incredible gift we've given ourselves to be learners. Now, being lifelong learners is something that I feel just is the greatest power that you can step into for yourself. Because when you're open to learning and to new experiences, your life is going to be with more opportunity and more beauty and more dreams than your neighbor. So on that note, I want to um, hand it over to Justina and ask her a few questions. We're going to answer some questions. I'm going to ask Justina questions, uh, talk, talk, talk a little bit about our Italy trip, and then we're going to open it up to questions. If you have a question for us, you can drop it in the chat box. And you can also, you don't have to, but if you'd like to, you can toggle it with a little uh, question and then it just like highlights in our screen so we can find it easier. And um, anyway, I admire Justina as I was saying so much because she is not only such a learner, but she's an incredible sharer. She threw her all of these incredible avenues, these social media avenues that she's engaged with. Uh, she shares with people every day, and she helps enhance the beauty of the everyday with people. And I love her for that. I also um, think that, you know, she's a five-time published author. And I find it hard to write a blog post sometimes, frankly. Like, I really, really suck at just getting a single blog post out. Let alone five women, you're on fire. Like, that is insane. You know? Just takes practice. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So I love that um, you really have honed your unique point of view. And I'd love to talk to you a little bit about that unique point of view. I feel like yours is very specific and unique. By the way, I just want to say that Justina is so amazing <laughs> that she's actually it dwell on design. Tell everybody, Justina, what where you're at right now. I love Sorry, this. you guys. If I'm making weird faces, I'm like shushing people. I'm at dwell on design, which is a, the biggest design 
fair in America that's starting on Friday and I'm designing a booth and I'm here like all week. So I found a quiet corner in this humongous convention center and I'm sitting on the floor surrounded by salads and um, <laughs> computer equipment. <laughs> and anyway, it's hectic. But uh, so if you can't hear me or anything at any point, just chat in and I'll try and scoot my situation around. But this is the life of a creative multitasker at its best. So forgive me <laughs> in advance if it gets hectic. <laughs> So, Justina, um, your the point of view that you've honed, and I love when we were talking on the phone before, you were like saying, you don't have to be everybody's cup of tea. And that, to me, is golden, because I think that sometimes we are trying to put our message or we're trying to connect with others and we sometimes feel like we have to connect with everybody. And in the end, we just want to connect with our people. Mm -hmm. So speak to that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I think for me, um, I, just being one of those people who, who does just kind of follow my heart, um, I started to notice really early on that there was a lot of sameness. And I didn't feel like it was necessarily authentic sameness. Like everyone really did, everyone in the world really does like, like all white stuff with pops of color. Like I felt like it was really people following trends and following what they saw other people thinking of as cool and of as interesting or profitable or any of those above things without necessarily honing into what it is they truly love. And so, um, I, you know, I spent seven years in Italy and a lot of that was about finding myself and seven years is a long time. <laughs> so I gave myself a lot of time to find myself. <laughs> um, and, and it came back to my roots, I think very much. And then it, and then that was combined with this experience of living abroad and being in a completely different culture and um, allowing myself to feel outside of my comfort zone. And what I realized is that when I push myself and I am somewhere where I'm not totally comfortable, that's when my mind is totally broadened and I start really observing and start really finding who I am through the differences and through the similarities of what I see with other people. And I think it was really through knowing myself and not being afraid to share my true self, that I was really able to build the audience that I've built and the brand that I've built. Because I think um, what I've noticed is that people who are like me seek me out and they'll find my Instagram and the second they look at it, they're like, oh my God, this, this is how I feel. This is similar to, to my point of view or how I see the world, but because there's so much sameness out there and people are so afraid to kind of share really who they are for fear of ridicule or for fe fear of being different. For me, I kind of took all of those things that could be considered negative and I kind of flipped them upside down and turned them into a positive. And so people are like, I love minimalism. I love pristine interiors, you know, and I'm like, well, I actually like things that are more cozy and homey and I'm okay with things that are a little more messy. And that's just how I am. And that's the real me. And putting that out, then people take a sigh of relief. And they're like, oh, God, me too. <laughs> I didn't realize it was okay to not be into minimalism because that's what's so hot right now. So I think that um, in general, just really being okay with who you are and being excited about who you are just makes it so much easier to share that openly. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love what you're saying. I, um, I feel like it took me a while in my own business to sort of feel comfortable sharing um, the, the sort of messier side of life. I mean, frankly, you know, I run a travel company, but I'm also, you know, I live in a house that we're renovating. Um, you know, my husband and I are always on the run. We have a six-year-old daughter. Our house is messy. It does not look like design magazines. It doesn't look like really anything that I'd want to share sometimes. Although, 
I found that when you can feel okay about sharing those sides, then it's like truly accessible and it is truly real. And you, and you make and you make connections. And it's like, yeah, you want to share your wins and you want to share your losses. Because that if you feel like that, if you're a little bit more private person, you know, it's like whatever works for you, I think is pretty much what you're saying. And I remember when we were talking on the phone that you were saying that you have some sort of ideas and exercises to like hone the point of view. And I mean, we're not going to talk about that right now, but I love that. Um, those tidbits that you have like actually kind of processes that you would put people through to connect with their uniqueness and their unique point of view. Yes, um, I think without giving away ahead. too much. Um, no, yeah, that, like, give it away, give it away. I think the give it away, uh, give it away, give it away now. <laughs> I think with any with anything that that you're engaged in and with any practice that that you that you have, whether it's um, you know you are a gymnast or a painter or whatever it is that you do, I mean the practice thing is no joke. I tell my two and a half year old every day, she'll be like, "Oh, I want to be a doctor." I'm like, "Cool, you can do that. You just have to practice." And it's, "I want to play the piano. Good, practice, 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 practice," and um, and that word has kind of a uh, kind of there's two sides to it right there's to practice and then there's a practice right mm. and so a lot of like these exercises that I like to engage in on a daily basis for me it's like yoga for my creativity so oftentimes people are like um oh like you were saying in the beginning like oh I don't know how you do a blog post like you know or how you write five books or all these and I mean the answer is it's it's because for me it's a practice just like there's there are people who engage in yoga every day and have become over the years extremely flexible and strong um, that's how I look at my creative practice um, and that you have to exercise it and so these exercises that I engage in on a daily basis to help my uh, practice of creativity snowball and grow is something that I'm really excited to share um, in the Cinque Terre. <laughs> <laughs> okay, could you give us like kind of a specific example about one of those things? I'm so incredibly curious. Like you just put out a book. How did the daily ritual of your life get scheduled to put that book into the world? <laughs> Very hectically. <laughs> I mean, um, I think with all projects, you um, you kind of figure out how to compartmentalize things. So for me, um, la last year was all about the book. The book was my like North Star and everything else besides my daughter and husband, <laughs> who are also my North Stars. Um, everything else that I do kind of becomes in support of that. Oh, looks like somebody lost the feed. Um, uh, so, and, Oh, well, we'll keep rolling with it. It's live, okay. so it can probably come back. Okay. Um, so as I was saying, like when I'm working on a really big project like that, for me, um, a book uh, as an author, this was my fifth book, so I've, I've done this before. I know what it takes and I know what you can get out of it. And it's not about money. Like if you want to do a book, if that's your the project that you're sort of intensely after, if you're a writer or a crafter or whatever it is, and, and, and the book is the medium that speaks to you and you want to put out a book, you're not going to do it for the money or at least you shouldn't be doing it for the money because that's not really a lucrative um, venture, but it is a platform building venture. And that was for me why I wanted to do um, all my books and this book and just because it's a creative project that I really enjoy. But um, the, the point is, is that unless it was going to be something I was extremely proud of, it wasn't going to be worth doing at all because I wasn't doing it for the money. So it was like all the other projects all of a sudden that I was working on, I figured out how to sort of make them in support of the book project. 
for that year until the book was out. And now it's other stuff that I'm working on, which we can get into if we want as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm moving into doing a lot of product design now. So that's where my attention is shifted to now that my book is out. And P.S. and New York Times bestseller. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> Holy mom. I know. I can't believe it. Um, so, so basically, I, I, I feel like um, it's really about juggling things and about figuring out how to shift different things in your life to support the projects that you're most excited about. And I think that the, that that's a yeah. really key word yeah. for me is the excitement. And it's it's about play and we're calling this like a playcation and um and I think <laughs> when you're a creative person the play aspect is so important. Like it's so important to give yourself you know, a, a certain amount of time a day that you can allocate just to being creative and just to playing and to letting your, thank you, <laughs> and to letting your, um, your mind really wander. And, and, uh, and that's when, for me, my best ideas grow. That's where it comes out of. I'm, I'm like, uh, I get so incredibly excited at these moments where I'm playing around with something. I'm, I'm, I'm allowing myself to hang out in my backyard, even if I've got lots of things to do. I look down at a leaf. The leaf smiles at me, and <laughs> thinks the foliage is born. You know, so so allowing yourself these moments to really explore. To me, that's sort of the golden hour. That's the golden time. The time where your ideas come. The, the time where you want to have a notepad and paper there, because then the next years and the next work that comes following that experience, that's when, you know, those ideas get developed and take form and then come out as a book or as a website or as a business or as branding for other people's businesses or whatever it is. So the play is, is, is vital to this process. Wow. I absolutely love that. And I can just, I know, I absolutely know deep down in my heart that when I disconnect a little bit to what I have my nose into at the moment, and when I go and I go for a walk, or I go and play at the park with my daughter, uh, I come back and I feel, even if it was just a short time, more revived, which is so simplistic, so why aren't we doing that more? Like, frankly, Everybody, you ask everybody, how are you? Busy. How's it Busy. going? I'm stressed. So why aren't we taking more time away to enjoy, like, we live in the most amazing age on the planet, probably. We have so much freedom, time freedom, um, choice freedom. Other people, you know, in history have never had this. So why are we filling our life with so much to-do lists and not enough playtime? Why? Yeah, especially because I think that what people forget is how productive playtime is. And I think that often we remember that as parents for our children, right? We're like, oh, they need recess. <laughs> they need lunch. They need this. They need that. But we are all... Um, constantly on the go. We don't give ourselves the time we need to come up with ideas. And I think that that's been um, at the heart of everything that I do. I always go back to uh, the concept, the idea. And, and when I share, I go back to the idea and the concept because someone can look at a pretty, a picture of a pretty room and they can say it's pretty and they might double tap it or whatever. But the second you attach an idea to that, um, wow, they used recycled tires to make this chair. That's, you know, whatever whatever the idea is that that's giving you as opposed to just sort of putting a picture out there and letting people kind of try and interpret it on their own. By giving people the ideas or the information that they need, that's already giving them twice as much as just the photo was giving them. So I think it's it's these kinds of things. You need time to give yourself these ideas to figure out how to translate them into whatever business venture you're doing. And, and so I, I really think this, this playtime is just as, if not 
way more productive than a lot of the other time that we spend during the day doing the bureaucratic stuff that we have to do as adults, but to actually allocate time, whether it's two days with us in August or whether it's a half hour a day uh, when you get up, you get up a half hour earlier in the morning to give yourself that time to just have some creative space for yourself. Um, these are these are the types of things that I do in order to to maintain um, a high level of creativity. I really allow myself to play a lot, and um, and I and I think that's why I'm able to do a blog post every day, and I'm able to come up with five books, and I'm able to really set my mind to something, and then figure out how to do it and get from A to Z, um, and get paid to do exactly what I love and exactly what I want to be doing. Like the fact that I'm being paid to design crazy spaces at Dwell on Design and playing with leaves in my backyard and like all this stuff, it's like blows my mind every day. And I know it's because, um, because I follow my heart and, and this allows me to have fun and experiment and play and not compromise. And, um, and that's, that's really what I hope to be sharing with you. And this is a little bit esoteric now, but the, the, the lesson plans and the courses that I've been developing for this are really going to be very tangible. Like I said, everything that I do is concept-based and idea-based. So if any of you guys have my book, you'll see how I really like try and break down the interiors in the book, or if you read my blog, like, it's, it's really for me about giving you all the tools you need to achieve what you're trying to achieve. So um, it's not just about empowering, but it's also giving people, giving you a step-by-step -step kind of this is what you need to do in order to get to where you're trying to go. And of course, I don't have all the answers, but I have a lot of ideas. And that's what I hope to share with you. Beautiful. Yeah, no, I love it. <laughs> You've just inspired me just sitting here for five minutes because I definitely um, feel like I don't let myself play as much as I think that I should. Even if I'm like, like highly creative, I'm much, I'm very good at picking stuff off my list. And um, so just, yeah, just hearing you speak, I just feel like already like I want to, you know, after the call, like go outside and spend 20 minutes or, you know, not look at my dashboard, right? <laughs> so um, tell us a little bit about the space you're setting up at Dwell on Design. I'm so curious. Oh, um, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> It's Bohemian Modern. If you guys are familiar with Dwell Magazine, they're the ones who put on the show. It's super modern, super stark. Um, not totally my vibe, so I'm like kind of injecting a bit of Dwell into my boho splendor. And the, um, the space that I'm designing is sponsored by the Yellow Pages. And in order to inject their branding in a way that's clear and exciting, I'm designing the whole thing in yellow. <laughs> so the entire space is like yellow and gold. <laughs> really crazy. Ah! Really <laughs> so these are the kind of crazy, wacky ideas I'm coming up with on a, on a daily basis. Um, because I allow myself time to play <laughs> and I keep a notepad by my yeah. by my bedside table because this idea was like how am I going to make sure people understand it's the yellow pages how am I going to make sure people understand this and I'm like oh <laughs> I know <laughs> I'll make it yellow um and even even the people on my team at, at YP were like really you want to do it yellow I'm like yeah and they're like is it going to look good I'm like yeah, it's going to look good. <laughs> oh, my so, God, I love it. Oh, that's I'm so really funny. Yeah, we'll see all of your your images. Um, Don't worry. I feel like we are, yeah, absolutely. I feel like time <laughs> is ticking, and I totally want to get to some questions. Um, I'm going to do uh, a cool, you know, get BFF with a little bit of PowerPoint and share just some really practical things about 
um, our, our trip that's coming up. Um, I, it's been so awesome to get really nice emails in the inbox. And I really, you know, just want to like break this down to be like, okay, when is it? What are we doing? Like, why, why would I spend the time? Um, and so here is a little bit about it. And I kind of want to show you the lay of the land too. Like the Cinque Terre is, there are five villages for anybody who knows a little bit about it. It's five villages along the coast of northern Italy. It's a continuation of the French coastline that comes down called the Italian Riviera. So it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which for us means that a lot of development that typically goes into a lot of these resort places um, has been spared, which is quite amazing. If you visit UNESCO Heritage Sites, it's like very preserved. You can't get a building permit to save your life there, which um, makes it so everything like it's stepping back in time. And I love this photo because it really does look like you're stepping back in time. And can everybody see my, my screen? I can see it. Sweet. This is uh, the date we are going to um, be in Italy for this trip, August 1 to 3. This is one of the villages of the Cinque Terre called Vernazza. And you can see it when you hike up the village, oh, when you hike up the trail. There's all of these villages are connected by a crisscross of walking trails. So a lot of people come to um, the Cinque Terre to see these walking trails. Oh, a lot of people can't see the, uh, the screen. Okay, let me see here. I'm going to try that again. Provaci un'altra volta. <laughs> I'm going to teach you guys Italian. I'm going to teach you guys Italian while you're there. That'd be awesome. Everybody would love that. <laughs> I always try like a little bit on my trips and I'm always like, oh Everyone yeah. It's me. I didn't even know you guys could see me. I'm glad I wasn't picking my nose or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can only see Justina. Ah, I'm going to hide now. <laughs> okay, I think we're there. So, how are you, are you seeing my screen, everybody? Uh, PowerPoint and me, obviously not BFF. <laughs> Can you see the screen? Yeah, so I think we got it up here. And here is... The Cinque Terre. This the is the Cinque Terre. And this the is the... Um, this is the screen that I wanted to show you. And it is a view from, like I was saying, trails. And um, it, it's kind of like the postcard view. You can like go up and with your phone. And I love it because if you find the hashtag Cinque Terre on Instagram, it's like everybody is, takes it of this. Love it. Um, and, you know, our workshop is pretty small and intimate, and I like to say that it's not all of these things. I know that there's conferences that you can go to, and I love going to conferences myself, but this is not a big conference. Um, this is kind of a get-together with friends, and it is something that I really want to to say is that connecting with 
face-to-face people for me personally in my life and my work has been really, really powerful. And I love getting together with uh, people face-to-face. Meeting on the interwebs is awesome, but meeting face-to-face is... More awesome. (laughs) There's something that just, yeah, there's something that just like, it, it jives, it melds, and sometimes it can be like a phone conversation or an email can lead to an in-person um, connection, but I've always found that that's very, very popular. Like, that pumped me up. And I feel like because I am a value person, like when I go out and buy a pair of shoes or when I like spend my money, <laughs> I want to really make sure that I am getting incredible value. And I think as a business owner and it just as a human being, the person that I am, when I deliver something, I want the people there to get incredible value. So this workshop that we're going to share with you is getting you closer to the person you want to be because I feel like that is the the best thing that you can do. It's just, and it doesn't have to be the person you want to be in 10 years. It can be the person you want to be in the next 10 minutes. Like, don't undervalue that. Um, We're going to, Justina has the curriculum that we're going to be going through, but really, we're going to be touching on a few high points, and I'm not going to read the slide. Everybody can read. But there's a few things that I just want to highlight. Um, Getting what you want is a little bit about understanding what the most important thing for you at the time being to move the needle forward in whatever you want to do and getting really, really uber clear on that. Because that clarity is the sweet spot. That is the golden thing that makes you be able to put the stuff in the world that you want to do. And that, and, and it's so hard to be clear. I have struggled with this in my life so much in the past. What do I want to do? What do I want to be? What do I want to put out in the world? Like I just didn't have the clarity and it's like in my past now, I feel like just honing in and taking time and putting that on your schedule to be like, okay, I'm going to like for the next 12 months go bang, 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 bang. This is what I want to do. And that's just like the little stuff. I love the concept of reimagining the possibility for your life because I feel like we as people right now in this world and in this time in history, we have so much possibility. And tapping into that is a wonderful gift to give to yourself. My favorite is just taking the time, like we were talking about before, before, you know, unplugging, drawing in your sketchbook, and uh, doing handstands, Joe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, handstands. Okay, practical staff, we're going to whip through this. Uh, how, how much? It's $9.97. Uh, where to stay? Oh, I'm going to whip through this. How much uh, early bird tickets are on sale until, what is it? June 8th. So it's nine ninety seven, And we kind of, you know, want to put an early bird price on there because it's like carpe diem. You know, you, we're, we, we put this together. It's there. We're, we're sharing it with, to the world. You know, Justine and I are really excited about it. We've already, I mean, I put the email out this morning and we already have three people booked. So that's so awesome. Um, and that is the Carpe Diem people, right? Uh, the schedule is August 1st is welcome party. So you can come in, you can fly into Italy on August 1st if you want to, or you can travel. Like if you're going to be there earlier, you could travel anytime on August 1st and then you would just like check in and find your room and all of this. And it is, and then you could come to our cocktail party, which is at 6:30 in the evening. And then August 2nd and 3rd, 
at the daily workshops um, all day. And then, of course, you know, hello, we're in Italy. We're going to be eating great lunches, which, of course, are all provided, the lunch spots and the cocktail party. And the workshop is included in the price. You um, get your own flight. You have tons of uh, different choices for flying, and I can talk a little bit more about that. And um, we also give a list of rooms. So here's where the heart is on the map, is where the Cinque Terre is. So Pisa is the closest airport to the Cinque Terre. If you're ever going to the Cinque Terre in any time, not just with us, I always recommend people fly into Pisa because the train platform, the city, like the state train platform is right outside of the Pisa airport. So you literally walk out of the airport and you get on your train. And it's about an hour and a half, an hour and 10 minutes, depending what train you catch, right into um, the Cinque Terre villages. You could also fly into Florence, Milan, Rome. And it cost 15 bucks to get from the Pisa airport. I love Italian trains. They're amazing. Like, Josina, I know that you could oh, I miss two them. Italian I trains. I miss them. Best. Someone asked where to meet where, where to meet Italians. I think I met like so many of my friends that I still have now on trains in Italy. It's a bonding experience. <laughs> totally is a bonding experience. And just the fact that you can go to any, like Italy is so small that you can literally reach any city that you want in the entire country in one day. I mean, yeah, I'm Canadian. Absolutely. Like that is just like, we, we drive five hours just to go to the grocery store, right? <laughs> <laughs> Right, like Italy is amazing for that, and it's so inexpensive. I mean, the the trains you can go from like top to bottom for I think it's like seventy euros or something. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. As far as the euro and U.S. Um, dollar exchange as well, it's really amazing for the U.S. dollar to the euro. It's like the best it's been in years. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but the American dollar is so strong right now against the euro. So it's about a buck ten to one euro. That's great. Yeah, for I us. know. For us. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It makes it easier. Yeah. The whole Canadian dollar, let's not even talk about that, but <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about it. No. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> um So oh you gosh. can say anywhere in the villages because you can travel to all of them in just a few minutes. Like it's so weird to actually be there and to know that you can just like hop from one village to the next. You can even walk to some of the villages. They're so close. Do you want to know something really, really cool? When I found this out, I just couldn't believe it. Is that their accent from village to village is different. Wow. Because that just speaks to how in history they were so isolated. So they developed their like unique dialect and accent, even if they were only a 15 minute walk away. Wow, that's amazing. I know, fascinating, right? So um, here's people like, can tell I live, people can tell I lived in Florence when like Italians when they hear me speak Italian because I have a Florentine accent, which is funny to me as well. <laughs> I love that. I know you say the hola. Yeah, uh, the exactly. Florentine ha ha ha. I know I love that accent. Yes, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I can't understand. I mean, my Italian is like I speak it for months at a time when we're in Italy all summer. But um, if I was in Sicily last. August and oh. I kept looking at my Italian friend going ah, oh, yeah. I couldn't it's understand I, it's a different it's also like a different yeah. language yeah totally yeah so as you can see on the map there's also um, a ferry so it connects like most of these villages and this is like all the walking trails that span all along here. So, you know, bring your walking shoes. Oh, and also bring your bathing suit because this village is the first village. If you were traveling um, from traveling north, it's called Rio Maggiore. This is the village that uh, we're hosting the workshop. 
if you can see my cursor, it's this building up here, the orange one. And oh my God, you can point to the building. That's so amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, we have a nice balcony, like an inside space, an outside space. The balcony is big enough for 30 people to sit out on it. So it's a huge balcony. So we wow. can make a big mess up there. <laughs> oh my gosh. So excited. And this is the town of Manarola. This is the next village. It's three minutes away on the train from Rio Maggiore to Manarola. We are going to be having our cocktail party in this village. And this is the view from the cocktail party spot so you can be scoring that photo oh my god my instagram is gonna be so pretty <laughs> it's gonna be off the hook anyway this is um cornelia cornelia is cool actually it's it's the lesser known of the cinque terre villages if you're interested in ever traveling to this region um, and if you want to be like in the Cinque Terre, but tucked away a little bit, this is the place to stay and hang out because uh, it isn't connected directly to ferries or the train. There is a train, but you have to walk 365 steps to get to the top of the village, one step for every day of the year. <laughs> This is the pretty picture of Vernazza. And if you stay in Vernazza, you can take the train. Um, it's about 10 minutes to Rio Maggiore. And trains run like every 20 minutes, half an hour. Like they run all day and till quite late. They run till about 11.30 at night. So like I always, when I'm staying in Cinque Terre, like I always take my clients out to for example, Monterosso, we'd eat dinner and then we'd come back to Rio Maggiore because we're sleeping there. It's like you can do all of that. You can do like all the parties and, and hang out and see all the sites and then just come back to your room at night. You don't have to be like packing your stuff and moving from village to village. And I just want to end the slides and turn over to questions. And I'm going to... There was a, a few questions submitted earlier, and I'm just going to get to those right now. And one was from Christina, and she writes, hey, really thinking about this trip. My birthday is August 10th, and I think it would be a great gift to myself if I can work it out. Just curious if I get my ducks in a row. Will you share information in the way of accommodations and such so I could maybe go out a day early and stay a day late? Five days would be luscious, daydreaming and hoping, Christina. Okay, Christina, okay, love it. I think you should stay five days. You can totally stay five days. Um, you could stay as long as you want. Like, you just come in a little bit early and leave a little later. I am always around, like, on email. You can phone me when you're planning your trip before you come, hook up with me. I will give you tons of different suggestions. Like if you want to say go to Florence for a few days before, or you want to fly out of Milan, like I, I do this for a living. This is what I love to do. I, I'm good at it. I will help you. So lean on me, lean, totally lean on me. I will help you. And another question came from Nikki and it says, what tips do you have for me? I have a serious case of wanderlust, but never seem to conquer the fear of traveling alone outside the country. And there's never anyone in my life that can go with me. I can totally relate to that question. I've always, I'm like ready to go. And I'm like, who's going to come with me? I mean, Justina, have you been in that position before? Like you went to Italy on your own. Yes, I like, did. And I was scared shitless <laughs> when I was on that plane. And I actually, on the plane ride over, met um, the girl who was randomly sitting next to me on the plane uh, is now 15. Oh, my God, I'm getting old. Almost 20 years later, 
seriously my best friend in the world. I'm going to be a bridesmaid at her wedding in, in September. So, um, it didn't take long for me to start making friends to travel with. Like literally I sat on the plane and I was seated next to this woman who is now my best friend. So um, <laughs> like amazing when you open yourself up to the possibility and really like sometimes when I'm in these positions where I'm scared or just feel apprehensive for whatever reason about doing something, whether it's just because I don't want to do it alone or, or because it's, it's just intimidating for whatever reason, I literally just like, and now I can picture the Cinque Terre, like standing on a cliff and just holding my breath and just jumping off. And you just <laughs> go for it. And you go for it. And you just dive in. And once you make that choice, you figure out how to swim. And you do. And you swim. And then you start you re realizing there's a lot of other cool people in the water. And you guys start partying together. <laughs> it ends up being amazing. Um, yeah, yeah I, absolutely. I, I think that you meet people is the answer to the question. So it's, you're not really going alone. Um, and, and even if, if you don't want to meet people, if you want a solo journey, like it's all good. But I think ultimately there are so many other people who are in that same boat who are alone that like you gravitate towards each other. And then all of a sudden you, you become best friends with people you never would have otherwise met and who never would have otherwise been in your life. And I think that that's a really important point too, because these kinds of in-person connections that we are going to make are the kinds of connections that last and they're not fleeting and they're not just um, liking double tapping and, and, you know, commenting every now and again, it's like real life homey shit. Um, and that's, that's how I feel about, about meeting people while you're traveling, you go through stuff together and it's exciting and you create memories that last a lifetime. And uh, that's, that's what it was for me. I mean, I stayed in Italy for seven years after I got on that plane, you know. So clearly uh, something, something right happened after I jumped off that cliff. I remember going to um, Italy the very first time, and I was so scared. I, I remember, like, waking up just before I went and being like, anxiety ridden like it, it, what's gonna happen to me am I good people am I gonna be like alone is this safe I had all of these ideas because I didn't know and I had traveled a lot before but I had never traveled alone mm -hmm. and I went to Italy and I think it was uh, within and it was a similar situation I was going there to meet a group of people who I was doing a summer school program with so I just got kind of like housed in an apartment with them and like ended up by having the most amazing summer of my life and was totally bummed out and depressed before I left because my boyfriend and I had just split up and I was just like not in a good headspace. So when I went to Italy by myself, I was like, this could be a complete disaster. I'm going to just starve here and be alone. And then I'm like three days later going, what was I thinking? Like, I have like three roommates who were like awesome. I ended up by, you know, they're some of my best friends now. And that was 12 years ago and we still hang out. We still are friends. Yep. Yeah. Go, go it alone, man. Like go it alone. Don't wait for anybody. You know, sometimes yep. you need to get permission from like a spouse or like a significant other other to be like yeah okay sure you can do that but as far as like asking permission from friends around you like you want to come with me like don't wait because people don't like you just got to do your own thing well i also think when you're <laughs> you traveling, totally got when you're traveling alone what remember what i was talking about early on the conversation is like pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone i think that all of a sudden you open yourself up to so many more possibilities and you open yourself up to meeting new people and trying things otherwise that would always be a negotiation. Um, so if you're traveling with a friend, that, that could be great, um, of course. But if you're by yourself, you get to do what you want to do and you meet, you open yourself up in ways that you otherwise may not have because traveling with a, with a friend feels comfortable and safe and traveling by yourself pushes you outside of your comfort zone and that opens you up in a completely different way. You'll probably learn more Italian. You'll probably meet more Italians. Um, these are all things to consider 
when when you decide um, whether to make it a solo mission <laughs> or to go with friends. Totally agree. Totally agree. There's I I actually have gotten that specific feedback from people over the years that have joined my trip because they're like, you know, coming alone was way better because I just kind of got to be me and I wasn't worried about taking care of anybody. You're still like taking care of people when you're traveling with them. You're nurturing them. It's quite a unique experience to just be like, okay, this is all me. This is the only problem that I have to deal with is what and like, do I want to drink three cappuccinos in the morning? Yes, I do. And I'm going to, you don't have to check your schedule with anybody. Anyway, I see a bunch of questions posted in the chat box and I'm going to start at the bottom here. So Christina writes, do the train travel between the villages? I was looking at hotels in Vernazza and Volasra. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Volasra is right up. I love Volasra. It's incredible up there. I mean, it's, it's a tiny village of one street and I don't know how many residents, but probably a hundred people who live up there. Uh, so how you get to Volasra is you go to Manarola and you take uh, the green bus and the green bus leaves like every like one and a half hours and you take the green bus up there. You can walk down Manarola to the train station in Manarola in probably half an hour. And Velocity is a tiny village that overlooks the entire bay. Like, I, I love it up there. It's very, very nice. So it's not the most convenient place to stay, but it's very beautiful. If you kind of, like, want to escape and have that real quietness, then do that. If you want to be close to more people, if you want to be five minutes from the train station, it, then, Christina, I would suggest to stay in Vernazza. Either or. And I love Kristen's comment here. I'm just going to share it. I traveled to Italy completely alone four times in the last two and a half years. There's no problem, safe, pretty easy to understand how to get around. Yeah, I totally agree, Christina. And I love Tonessa. I hope I'm pronouncing your um, name right. You're coming on the trip. I saw your registration this morning, girl. Yeah! Yay! <laughs> And she says, uh, this will be my first trip alone. I'm nervous, but so excited. I, I feel you, girl. I feel you. Yeah. But you, you have built-in friends. Like, it's, we're going to be welcoming you, welcoming you with open arms. Like, you're not alone. You're, like, amongst friends. And you're amongst somebody, you know, my sister-in-law lives 10 minutes away. I have family in the area. Like, I have dozens of friends. It's, we're not just, you know, going there as a group of foreigners. We're going there with somebody who has, like, the hotline to anything you need, right? Like, so, yeah, feel very in the cocoon. Um, is there a specific agenda posted on the workshop? This question is from Teresa. Yes, everything is on, on um, the page that's live right now, and I'm going to send you a link to that right now in my fancy fancy dashboard this thing is kind of pimped out I have to say Justina <laughs> gangster <laughs> so if you click that link that I just put up then you can see like the whole um, all of the subjects that we're teaching and the, like I mentioned, the workshop is on August 2nd and August 3rd, 9.30 to 6.30. We're going to divide all of those subjects and teach half in one day, half in the other day. Then we're just going to like go swimming for the rest of the time. Yes. So I just want to get to a few more questions. We're going to wrap this up. Beautiful people, I love you all. Thank you so much. <laughs> this was really fun and 
you know, it's always like when you're putting stuff into the world, you're like, is this going to work? Is this going to be cool? Are people going to come? And I'm like, yay, thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yes, thank you guys so much. I cannot wait to hang out in Italy with you. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rebecca just said everything that you and Justine. Oh, she just confirmed. I saw you on the registration too, Rebecca. That's so awesome. Yay! That's so cool that you're traveling alone. That's so awesome. Yeah, we're yeah, we're not we're not alone. We're with friends. I'm gonna pull up a few more questions. Um, Lisa writes, "I'm going to be in Florence early September. How long does the train take to get to Cinque Terre? It's about two hours, and." It's very simple. The train station leaves from Santa Maria Novella, like right in Florence. You can walk to anywhere in Florence. Florence is so amazing. I can give I you Florence city. tips also. That's my, <laughs> that's my hood. That's my hood. So if you need Florence yeah. tips, I can help you with that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think it's about two and a half hours on the train. It just depends what train you can catch. You can see all of the train schedules on Train Italia website. Train, T R E N. I'm going to drop it in the chat box right here. And I'm just going to read a few. Bear with me here. The comments are adding so fast I can't see them. Telling. Okay, cool. Uh, Teresa says I've done a few workshops similar to find your creative spot. So how is this different to be awesome? No, what will be just wondering. Been to Italy twice and can't wait to get back. Teresa, how will this workshop be different from other workshops that you've offered, um, Justina? Because you, um, you've offered quite a few workshops before. You're like a you're a teacher. You're yeah, a, you're I've a been, sharer. I've been teaching for a while, and I really enjoy teaching. Um, I I don't think you've done any of my workshops specifically. I'm guessing, Teresa. But um, if you're wondering if uh, just so I I'm not sure what to compare it to, like what other workshops you may have done. But um, I think that the main thing that I bring to the table when it comes to creative workshops is sort of a tangibility and a way to understand how to apply the creativity to what you're doing. So it's conceptual based, but then the ideas that I'm going to be sharing are, are things that you can actively and easily sort of apply to whatever it is that you're doing. So my back, my professional background um, is sort of trifold. I've worked in fashion, I've worked as an art director, as a graphic designer, and now um, I work in interiors and do marketing and branding and, and all that kind of stuff. So I it's, it's really going to be a way um, to play, to have this creative time for yourself, but then to take that creative knowledge and, and, and that playfulness that we've just sort of given ourselves and allowed ourselves and actually apply it to whatever creative entrepreneurial or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, how giving you tools to, to actually apply to that. And I, and I hope and think that that's probably different from anything that you've um, experienced in the past. And that includes some um, ideas on the marketing side of things. If you guys are interested in things like social media, how to grow your audience, how to find your voice, discover your style. Those are all things, tangible things that I'll be discussing in this workshop. So there's going to be some play, but there's going to be some work too. Awesome. Love it. Um, and I see another question that says, do you think you will do another trip with Justina next year? You know what? It's not, who knows what next year will hold. We have not talked about it. So this is the one we're doing. And um, who knows about next year? We have no con confirmation. Rebecca says, Bianca is the itinerary for the 19th to 25th trip on your site. I think you're talking about the photography trip that I'm also running 
with Leela said yes. Um, that is all the details are on the site. The day-to-day -day itinerary I, I have in my folder. You may have it. And Lisa and Teresa, oh, thank you. I'm just reading your comments. And I think we're there. I think we're there. I want to wrap this up. A, I want to, Achibachi, honestly, thank you. Thank grazie you for being mille. here. Grazie mille, grazie mille. Ci vediamo. <laughs> Ci vediamo, ragazzi. Ci vediamo. <laughs> Ci vediamo lì. See you in the Cinque Terre with my bikini on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I just pulled mine out of the drawer. I'm so excited. I'm like, hello. So excited. Number I'm so like, wearing. Meanwhile, I haven't worn a bikini since pre-baby, but I do not care. Own it, own it, own it. <laughs> yeah, in Italy, you know, as you know, Justina, everybody lets it all hang out. Let you it all out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Follow what your mama gave you. Follow your heart. <laughs> Follow your curves. Curves that away. <laughs> right. Love it. Okay, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.